everyone, and welcome to In Our Community. Today, we're going to be studying a European poet named Cheshla Milosh, and I hope I'm pronouncing it well enough. I hope so. I'm going to be reading a little bit from the introduction of one of his books and then maybe reading some of his poetry. I admire him a lot. I saw him on a video on YouTube with uh, Robert Haas, and they did a they did a show together with someone. So let's get right into it if we can, okay? Here's the book I'm going to be reading from. Can you see it? Here, let's try to. That's the that's the book. It's coming in blurry on my end, so I don't know. Anyway, it's called Cheshla Milosh, winner of the 1980 Nobel Prize for Literature, The Collected Poems. And like I say, I'm going to read a little bit of the introduction first. And then, and then read, read a, a couple, a few poems. All right, so the, I think the introduction to books are important. I know a lot of people skip them, but I don't. And this introduction is called the preface. The volume, this volume was prepared at the initiative of Daniel Halpern, director of Echo Press, and is the result of his proddings. It embraces poems, in translation, published previously in four volumes, and the four volumes are uh, Selected Poems, Bells in Winter, The Separate Notebooks, and Unattainable Earth, as well as new poems and many older poems translated here for the first time. The material is organized chronologically. Following the contents of the original volumes published in Polish. Thus, the divisions of the English volumes have been abandoned. The title collected poems is not intended to suggest that all my poems are here or Many have been eliminated either because there was no satisfactory English version or because they had never been rendered into English. Let me interrupt myself by saying that this preface is being written by the author, Cheshla Milosh. Okay. The number of poems taken from particular volumes varies. My first slim book published in 1933, is represented by one poem at the insistence of my friend Robert Haas, who found it in wild, found it a wild art, anarchistic, anarchistic energy. And by the way, I can't show it on you here, but this book, it's a used book, was signed by Robert Haas for Cheshla Milos. Robert Haas is another very famous poet and his, his signature is in here. The existence of this body of poetry is in a language different from one in which it was written for me is for me the occasion of a constant wonder. It means many hours throughout the years spent over text with my co-translators and is a reminder of the, their devotion and friendship. Skeptical at first about the translatability of my verse, I started working casually with the students or colleagues, with my students or colleagues at the University of California, Berkeley on one or two poems, then slowly enlarged the scope. Some of the early co-workers, Robert Laurie, and it gives a long list of names. They have been my cordial, they have my cordial thanks, as do others whose names I no longer attach to particular poems. A substantial contribution was made 
by my student Lillian Valley, with whom I prepared Bells in Winter. I thank her for her intelligent att attention. Let's not read the rest of it, but that's some of it. Okay, I'm going to read some of the poems in here. And again, he's telling us they're in chronological order. So this first poem will probably be, it says Three Winters, 1936. Okay, and his poems are rather long, so you'll want to bear with me. This first one is three pages. I don't know if we can get through it or not. It's called The Song. You want to skip that maybe and go to something else? Now, let's try it. Okay, and in front of each set of verses, stanzas, large stanzas, there's a word. Like, it says women, and then it has about 10 lines of poetry. And it says chorus, 10 lines of poetry, women, etc. So it might be, it's called the song. So that's how the song works. The earth flows away from the shore where I stand. For trees and grasses more and more distant shine. Buds of chestnuts, lights of frail birches. I don't see you anymore. With worn out people, you move away. I won't see you anymore. With worn out people, you move away. With the sun waving like a flag, you run toward the night. I am afraid to stay here alone. I have nothing except my body. It glistens in the dark. A star with crossed hands. So that I am scared to look at myself. Earth, do not abandon me. And that group was spoken by a woman. It says woman, singular. All right. And then we have chorus is... Ice flowed down the rivers. Trees sprouted from buoyant leaves. Flowers went through the fields. Doves in the forest are cooing. A doe runs in the hills and cries her exulting songs. Tall stem flowers are blooming. Stem steam rises from warm gardens. Children throw balls. They dance on the meadow of threesomes. By threesomes, women wash linen at streamside and fish for the moon. All joy comes from the earth. There is no delight without her. Man is given to the earth. Let him desire no other. Okay, that was the stanza for the chorus. Now we're going to have the one for the woman again, okay? I don't want you. Don't tempt me. Keep flowing. My tranquil sister. Your burning touch on my neck. I still feel it. Nights of love with you, bitter as the ash of clouds. And the dawn after whom red... And on the lakes, first terms circling and such sadness that I could not cry anymore. Just keep counting the hours of the morning. Listen to the cold rustle. I'm going to have to turn the page. There's no graceful way to do that, I guess. Of the high dead poplars. You, God, have mercy on me. From the earth's greedy mouth, deliver me. Cleanse me of my untrue songs. So this is part of the poem here. Okay, now we have the chor a chorus part again. The captains are turning... Fish toss in the nets. Baked breads smell sweetly. Apples roll on the tables. Evenings go down the steps and the steps are live flesh. Everything is begot 
by the earth. She is without blemish. Heavy ships are yawing. Copper brethren are sailing. Animals sway their backs. Butterflies fall into the sea. Baskets wander at dusk. Dawn lives in the apple tree. Everything is begot by the earth. To her, everything will return. And then the woman part again. Oh, if there were in me one seed without rust, no more than one grain that could per perdue, perdure, P-E-R-D-U-R-E, perdure, I could sleep in the cradle leaning by turns now into darkness, now into the break of day. I would wait quietly till the slow movement ceases and the reel shows itself naked suddenly. Till a wildflower, a stone in the fields stare up. A stone in the fields stare up with a disc of an unknown new face. Then they who live by live in lie in the lies. Then they who live in the lies, like weeds, at the bottom of a bay's wash, would only be what needle pine needles are. When one looks from above, the clouds are a forest, but nothing, but there is nothing in me, just fear. Nothing but the running of dark waves. I am the wind that blows and dies out in dark waters. Then there's another part. It's still part of the woman part, but it changes the form changes. It's like a different set of stanzas. It's part of the woman's part. I am the wind going and not returning. The milkweed pollen on the black meadows of the world the last voices at the forge on the lake shore hammer blows a man bent over fixes a scythe his head gleams in the flame of the hearth a resin chip is lit in the hut tired plowboys lay their heads on the table the bowl is already steaming and the crickets sing. Islands are animals falling asleep. In the nests of the lake, they settle down, pouring above them a narrow cloud. And then at the bottom, it says, will know, W-I-L-N-O. Might be a city or something. 1934. And that is the first poem. It's the first poem. Tempted to read it again. I'm not sure if I will. Anyway, you guys, I really like poetry, obviously. A lot of my life has been devoted to poetry. I want to stop here in the middle and thank KMVT Television, whose website is KMVT, like Mountain View, KMVT15.org. For carrying this TV show. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to move over here and get a soft drink, but you're not allowed to see the glass. That's part of the rules on TV, on our TV station, at least. Boy, okay. I don't know if I'll read that one. That one's kind of long. I think I might read something shorter, but maybe read it twice. I know I made mistakes in that poem, and I apologize. Okay. All right, let's look at the book here. Let's see what we can find. Uh, the next piece is even longer. These pieces are just all long. There's no doubt about it. Wow. Here's one that's only two pages, but that's still pretty long. It's dense. It's called Dawns, plural. A tall building, 
The walls crept upward in the dark, above the rustle of maple leaves, above hurrying feet, a tall building dawning with its lights above the square, inside hissing softly with, in the pre-dawn hours. <clears throat> the elevator moved between the floors, the cables twanged, a rooster's cry, cry rang in the pipes and gutters till a shiver ran through the house. Then awkward, no, nope, those awakened heard this singing in the walls, terrible as the earth's happiness. Already the screech of a, cra of a tram and day, and smoke again. Oh, the day is dark above us, who are shut up in our rooms. Flocks of birds fly by in a whir of flickering wings. Not enough. Our life is not enough. I'd like to live twice on this sad planet. In lonely cities, in starved villages, to look at all evil, at the decay of bodies, and probe the laws to which the time was subject, time that howled above us like a wind. In the courtyard of the apartment house, street musicians croon in chorus. The hands of listeners shine at the windows she gets up from her rumpled sheets. In her dreams, she thought of dresses and travel. She walks up to the black mirror. Youth didn't last long. Nobody knew that work would divide a day into great toil and dead rest. And the moon would pause every spring above the sleep of the weary ones, in our hearts heaving, beating, no spring for us anymore, not love, to cover up one's thighs. Let them not, with their, clear, with their lacing of thin purple veins, remember this child rushing down the staircase, this child running down the gray sidewalk, Laughter can be heard in the distance. A new, everything the child will discover anew, and down in an immense, empty, frosty road, through a space ringing with the thunder of the pulse, her child will go, and time will howl. Standing naked in front of her mirror, the woman lightly swipes away two tears with her handkerchief and darkens her eyebrows with henna. And again, Will, the city is Wilno, W-I-L-N-O, 1932. So thank you very much. We have about nine minutes left in the show. So I'm going to just take a, I'm going to just take a little break, but I won't. I don't want to stop this. I got to take a break. I'm right here. I'm going to blow my nose, take a drink. I'm going to read a few more things to you. All right, guys. I didn't read a biography of Cheslow Milosh, but his name, his first name is spelled C Z E S L A W. Let me repeat that C Z E S L A W. And his last name is M I L O S Z. M I L O S C. The winner of the 1980 Nobel Prize for Literature. So, 
Right? Some of these forms are so so very long, I can't I can't realistically start them. Boy, they're long, geez. Uh let's try this one. This one is now this is these last two have been from my a book or something of the section is called Statue of a Couple. Okay, let me try to read this. This doesn't have a title. Maybe Statue of a Couple is the title, I don't. Yeah, I think it is. All right. Your hand, my wonder, is now icy cold. The purest light of the celestial dome has burned through me, and now we are as two still planes lying in the darkness, as two black banks of a frozen stream in the chasm of the world. Our hair combed back is carved in wood. The moon walks over our ebony shoulders. A distant cock crow, the night goes by silent. Rich is the rhyme of love, withered the dowry. Who are you living in what depths of time? Love, stepping down into what waters? Now, when the frost of our voiceless lips does not fend off the divine fires. In a forest of clouds, of foam, and of silver we live, caressing lands under our feet. And we are wielding the might of a dark scepter, spec, scepter, scepter, to earn oblivion. My love, your breast cut through by a chisel knows nothing anymore of what it was. Of clouds at dawn, of angers at daybreak, of shadows in springtime, it has no remembrance. And you have left me at once an angel led Tobias, as once an angel led Tobias, into the rusty marshes of Lombardy. But a day came when a sign frightened you, a stigma of gold measure. With a scream, with immobile fear in your thin hands, you fell into a pit that ashes lie over, where neither northern firs nor Indian, Italian years could protect our ancient bed of lovers. What was it? What was it? What will it be? We fill the world with our cry and calling. The dawn is back. The red moon set. Do we know now in a heavy ship a heel helmsman comes? throws a silken rope and binds us tightly to each other. Then he pours on friends, once enemies, a handful of snow. Wilmo, Wilmo again, 1935. Okay. Oh, boy. I don't know what to tell you about this author. I really like him. I think his work speaks better than his talking about him. Uh yeah, so we've got about four minutes left. Yeah, I don't know if I should read part of a poem or not. I think as long as his poems are, we're probably going to have to only read a part of one. And then... Now well, here's one with shorter, shorter. Uh, yeah. I don't know. 
Let's try this one. This is called the Ballad of, and it gives a long word, L-E-V-A-L-L-O-I-S. Levelos. Levelos. Barracks for the Unemployed in Levelos, Barrett, 1935. Oh God, have mercy on Levelos. Look under these chestnut trees poisoned with smoke. Give a moment of joy to the weak and the drunk. Oh God, have mercy on Levelos. All day long they stole and cursed. Now they lie in their bunks and lick their wounds. And while the darkness thickens over Paris, they hide their faces in their thieving hands. Oh God, have mercy on Levelos. They followed your commandment every day. They harvested wheat, tore coal from the earth, and often drenched themselves in their brother's blood, murmuring the names of Jesus and Mary. Their insane jabber welled from the taverns. That their song in your praise, they perished in mines, in the snow, in the heat, in mud, and the depths of the sea. It was they who lifted you above themselves, their hands sculpted your face, so dine to design to look, so dine to look on your faithful priests. Give them the joys of table and bread, bed, table and bed. Take from them the stigmas of illness and sin. Set them free. Lead them into Sodom. And there's more on the next page. Okay. Let them adorn their houses with garlands. Let them learn how to live and die more lightly. Darkness, silence. A bridge hums in the distance. The wind streams through Cain's trees on the void of the earth, on the human tribe. No mercy, no mercy on Levelos. And that poem was called Ballad of Levelos. Okay, folks, we're just about ready to wrap up the show. Again, I want to thank uh, JMBT. This show is called In Our Community. And I'm your host and your guest, Mark Isaac Potter. I'm the owner of the show. Just wanted to do some work with Cheshire Milosh today. I care about you all very much. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. I'm going to turn off the... Thank you.